Now, the eight-year tenure of President Buhari, which commenced on May 29, 2015, comes to an end on Monday, May 29, 2023. Now, activities of the inauguration of the president-elect Bola Ahmed Tinubu commenced weeks ago, and the inauguration proper is actually slated to take place at Eagle Square in Abuja by 10 a.m. on Monday. Now, President Buhari on Thursday conferred on the president-elect Bola Tinubu and his vice president-elect Kashim Shatima highest honors of GCFR and GCON, respectively. President Mohamed Buhari has asked ministers to remain in office until the end of his tenure, contrary to the expectation that, you know, he will dissolve the cabinet before the valedictory Federal Executive Council meeting on, on Wednesday. Now, the challenges before the incoming administration are enormous from policy priorities, economic challenges, security concerns, corruption and governance, social and developmental issues, and international relations as well. But we have in the studio joining us, Gide Ojo. Uh, he's a public affairs analyst. Good morning and thank you for joining us. Good morning, ladies. <laughs> Good morning. Daka Juma. Juma, Juma. And we also have on standby Umar Sani. He's a PDP chieftain and comrade Musa Ali Otigba, the national coordinator, APC National Coalition for Mass Mobilization 2023 and director of campaign and mobilization amalgamated APC support group who will be joining us later. Now, thank you so much for joining us uh, once again, Mr. Gide Ojo. It's my pleasure. Now, uh, if you look at the newspapers today, you'd actually see, you know, uh, a constant or a consistent, you know, story of uh, the president, that's the outgoing president, Muhammad Buhari, and uh, his tenure, how he said he's actually run a good race and, you know, a lot of other things. But uh, being a neutral party right now, what is actually your assessment uh, on the last eight years of the president? Well, the eight years of President Muhammad Ubari is a mixed grill of the good, the bad, and the ugly. So um, you can situate the performance of the president against several benchmarks. Um, two weeks ago, I had the privilege and honor of um, presenting a paper at a workshop here in Abuja that was um, for, uh, you know, organized by Conrad Adena Foundation, a German, a German international NGO. Um, for technical assistance and special advisors to the president, uh, to the ministers. Uh, it was a two-day event here in Abuja. And um, my presentation was on the legacy of the president. Mm. And researching into, for that paper showed me uh, quite a lot of things were done uh, and achieved by the outgoing president. Remember, Governance is tripartite. It's a trilogy. Uh, you have the executive, the legislature, the judiciary. You also have uh, federal, state, and local government. So um, horizontally and vertically, um, you have people who are saddled with responsibilities to do certain things. Um, when a president is a judge to have done very well. That means he has the full cooperation of these three arms and three tiers of government because everything rubs off on the president. So, if I want to look at what were the challenges, Buhari came when the price of crude was lowest, I think it was about $25, $30 per barrel way back in 2015. So there was about 60% revenue shortfall. And then, of course, in 2020, we had to battle COVID-19 mm -hmm. for close to two years. Uh, this in itself impacted negatively on what the proposed achievement. Then you look at, um, look at the uh, the fact that we went into recession in 2016 or there about, and which was what informed the economic recovery and growth plan. Mm. Now, we are not where we ought to be. 
in fairness, we, we should have achieved a lot better than what the outgoing president is leaving us with. However, we are not where we also used to be. So it's a modest achievement, but that can be contextualized as to um, depend. You see, I choose to see the cup as being half full rather than being half empty. So you there are those who say, oh, this administration has taken off from top to bottom. No, that is not entirely true. Okay. To, to an extent, yes, we are not where we ought to be in the community of nations in terms of, I mean, the aspiration was to, uh, help for us by 2020, housing for us by 2020, uh, you know, food for all by 2020, everything for us by 2020. Yeah. 2020 has come and gone. Where are we? Each of uh, um, uh, Millennium Development Goals and later, uh, you know, social uh, SDGs, that's a... Um, Sustainable development goals. 17 of them, where are we? We are not where we ought to be on all of that. When you look at the corruption perception index, we are 150 over 180 countries surveyed by corruption perception by Transparency International as last year. When you look at the human development index, we are not where we ought to be. When you look at the poverty rate, 133 over uh, 103 million Nigerians said to be uh, below okay. poverty, living below poverty. When you look at unemployment, it's 33.3. That in itself, all of this put together will tell you that, oh, this administration hasn't delivered on its campaign from the way it, it ought to. However, we need to also now put in context what I was saying earlier about those challenges. You have a scenario that a president came in and it was almost zero empty budget, empty treasury he met. Mm -hmm. uh, so he met an empty treasury, the uh, revenue uh, was 60% shortfall in revenue. So if you are earning 100 naira before, you are now handing 40 naira. You cannot do as much. So he resorted to borrowing. Again, that, that worries me. One thing that, uh, let me say in, in full context, there are those challenges faced by this administration that I can classify as being a force majeure. When you say force majeure, you are saying something you could not help something that happens a natural disaster so you have this flood 2022 you have the covid 19 you have the quite a number of other challenges but there are also those that it's inflicted on on itself and let me put that in context too this president in 2015 appointed how many ministers 36 but by 2019 Despite the fact that you have very heavy revenue shortfall, you decided to go for 43 ministers. Yeah. Why do you need that? Rather than reducing the cost of governance, this administration has increased substantially the cost of governance. And that worries me. Because this, when this president came under the change matter in 2015, Part of the campaign was that he was going to reduce the cost of governance. So we were looking forward to him selling off uh, um, at least two-thirds of the presidential year fleet, reducing the number of ministers and ministries, uh, implementing a uh, committee report, report mm -hmm. um, also carrying out several other reforms that we ensure that we have frugality in our budgeting system. But what we saw is that billions of naira were still being uh, being voted for welfare and entertainment, <laughs> status budget, billions for travels. I think you are putting close to sometimes I think about ten billion for travel. You are not doing commercial. You you have presidential year fleet. Okay. So when you look at this, these are self-inflicted. But I've told you the one that is first major that mm. you can't help. COVID-19 was not envisaged. Mm. Then the self-challenge also presented a huge, you know, way back in 2017. Yeah, I think for was. about eight months in 2017, it was on medical tourism trying to attend to itself. So these are the way I see it. We are not where we ought to be. But we are not also where we used to be. Because in fairness, as I said on another media platform, 
This president prioritized the completion of abandoned projects. Many of the abandoned projects of Good Luck Jonathan and previous administration, he tried to complete them, like the rail line, uh, Abuja Kaduna rail line. Yeah, he, he actually he, said that his administration is best in road infrastructure. Except heavily, heavily. The three major roads that he delivered on, Lagos Ibadan Expressway, Second Niger Bridge, and uh, uh, Abuja Kaduna, Kano, Majuguri, it, 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 they are legacy projects. There are 12 dams that was completed under this administration. There are several other legacy projects. Even when you look at legislation, this is a pro the president that gave the persons with disability the National Disability Act and a commission to see to the welfare and well-being of uh, the persons with disability. You may say, oh, what is the big deal? You are having about 30 million Nigerians who are persons with disability. That's a significant number. And that number is even much more than many African countries. And that's the community, of, because according to uh, UN, um, UN statistics, 15% of Nigeria is made up of persons with disability. So he gave, he gave them national disability. Look at the, 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 the commission that is headed by, um, by Odor uh, uh, Lalu now. Then you look at the petroleum industry as the constitution alteration. I wrote in my column in the punch about three weeks ago that this is an administration that um, altered the constitution the most. You know what I mean? In 2018, he altered it. He signed five alteration laws. In 2023, he assigned 16. And this 16 happens to be one that even was against the run of play. He said, Buhari said, he doesn't believe in restructuring. But on his way out, in March 2023, he was able to alter the constitution. And three of those alterations stood out for me. And what are they? Removal of electricity from the exclusive legislative list, removal of um, a correctional center, which we formerly known as prison, Reasons. from exclusive legislative list, and then the removal of railway from exclusive legislative okay, list. Okay, Mr. Chide, now let's uh, talk about, you know, the healthcare sector. Now, as it is, uh, uh, the president actually built an international standard, you know, uh, wing, you know, that's a hospital in the villa. Meanwhile, if you come out, take a look at some of our hospitals, especially the public hospitals, you know, there's so much that actually needs to be done. Not to talk of the doctors who are actually on strike at the moment, not to talk of the brain drain of doctors and then the bill that was actually passed, you know, uh, a few months ago. So what is your take on that? Again, it's, it's a portfolio of um, uh, issues. Unfortunately, it didn't do well in education and health. Uh, sincerely speaking, uh, what he considered as achievements, uh, I, I do not foresee that as a serious achievement. Although he did a bit for the health sector, um, there is uh, this one percent of uh, uh, that is meant to one percent of the budget for funding of uh, health, health care delivery. But when you look totally, you, I mean, Josu is it health Josu? Our strike now, indefinite strike. Last week, National Association of Resident Doctors Doctors. were on strike. Mm. You know, they've been on strike several, several times. And then you, of course, you are on point when you talk about brain drain. Um, many Nigerians, thousands of them, have relocated to UK, to Saudi Arabia, to other African countries. And, and, and because of the situation at all, which is not palatable. So, in and, and, and this would, <laughs> when I listen to uh, uh, First Lady Aisha, Aisha Buhari say, oh, uh, the incoming association will not need to go abroad for Medicare. And uh, why didn't the husband stay at home mm -hmm. and enjoy that Medicare that he has provided in Asura? Remember there were newspaper report some years ago that even, in Asura, even Aisha herself said that in Asura clinic, they do not have x-ray machine. It was that bad. X-ray, 
just basic extreme machine. They do not. That was some four or five years ago. Okay. But it's so, good that they have funded it now to a place. Mm, to so a level. with all these analyses uh, been done, you know, we've seen how uh, the administration of President Muhammadu Buhari has been. What? How would you rate, you know, his administration? Let's say just in one word. It's very difficult to rate it in one word without being pejorative. You know why I said that? Because it's a double-edged sword. It's a double-edged thing. I would say, uh, like I've tried to do, positive things and negative things that he has done. So on the whole, he did his own bit. And history will rate him uh, one way or the other, whether he actually, because I, even yesterday, I was at National Institute for Legislative and Democratic Studies uh, commissioning of their new permanent site, which was commissioned by the president. And the National Assembly leadership was commending him that he signed over 100 critical laws. Mm. Okay, fine, that's a very good one. And then, of course, we said he delivered on the infrastructure. But there were more grants to be covered, which were not covered. And for that singular reason, um, many people may not remember him in a very positive way because now he, he himself is feeling the heat that maybe he did so much and, and the appreciation is not coming in. Mm. But I feel that some of those lack of appreciation was as a result of, um, you know, um, you are doing one positive thing one positive thing but you are doing two three things that are not okay mm. so people are not going to see that one or two positive things they are most likely going to Neg see those negative actually that's true. Too. yeah so so that is why it's quite difficult to say oh is the i won't say he's the best president nigeria has ever had i'm sure he could not even rate himself as the best president right, nigeria has. So but he did his bit <laughs> within the available resources and I will say this as a finality. He did not oversight his lieutenants well enough. Mm. So they were able to run rings around him. <laughs> All right, well, thank, thank you, you so much, uh, Mr. Jide Ojo, for taking time out to, you know, uh, discuss this particular issue with us. We appreciate your time. My pleasure. Thank you.